Welcome to the Mark West Sports Podcast. Welcome to the Mark West Sportscast with your boy Marcus Benjamin, also with Wesley P- Pierre. Here to give you them real picks for the week so you can make that bread. Scared money don't make no money. Yes, uh, more on that a little bit later because uh, we'll talk a little Gucci Mane, uh, Young T. Ah! Uh, they, they got a little versus battle going on this week, mm-hmm. so we'll, we'll talk a little bit about that too. Uh, but the game of the week, um, as you can probably already know based on Wes's background, was the Dolphins against the Chargers. Big matchup against you know two uh, potentially really good rookie quarterbacks with uh, Tua Tagovailoa and Justin Herbert. But we saw who was the better team overall. And you can make tell you. Argument, a better quarterback, too, because mm-hmm. uh, uh, the, the game went south for the Chargers when Herbert threw that interception to Xavier Howard. So overall, it was another great win by the Dolphins. I mean, I mean, what can you say about this team? I mean, we, I mean, Wes and I, we keep picking them every week. And it's not only because we home team, it's because that's what we see. And that's mm-hmm. what's happening. They're doing you know? their thing. Exactly. And, you know, I expect that to continue with the schedule that they come that they, that they got coming up. So, I mean, my takeaways from the game, Tua look, look great. Uh, it's really promising to see him be effective in the red zone. You know, the fact like he's inside the 20, he's making great, great throws, great decisions. Uh, although there was a couple uh, questionable throws, but he's almost picks. Almost yeah. picks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he had a couple of, well, he had one ball in particular that should have been intercepted straight up, went through the boys' hands like straight up. Mm-hmm. Uh, but overall, you, you're still getting a great performance. We have basically no running game. Like it's basically a dude out there on the street that's that's r- running the football for us right now. That sounds it's, like the New England Patriots, the old New England Patriots. Didn't have no running back. Got Corey Dillon, then got all these other running backs to you know fill in that 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 void that they were missing. So the Dolphins, I mean, that's what they're calling us in the in the, in the ESPN in the NFL, like. A newer version of the New England Patriots, but Patriots South, <laughs> you know. But uh, but yeah, I mean, basically a no-name running back. Hopefully, we get uh, the young boy um, uh, Gaskins back soon. But uh, it's really the defense uh, that's really winning games for the Dolphins right now. Flores is really doing his thing, and they this team just keeps on rolling. Uh, it's it's great to see the Dolphins really you know, do their thing and everybody can, can get on board. If you haven't jumped on the bandwagon yet, go ahead and jump on. There's plenty. Oh, they're going to jump on. They're going to jump on. Trust me. You feel me? Like <laughs> we're used to the people doing that. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, we, we roll with winners and right now Dolphins is winning. I'm actually, every, every time I go somewhere, I'm starting to see Dolphins gear, see people with Dolphins masks everywhere, yep. mm-hmm. you know? Like, damn, I, I stayed walking minds of win or lose. Not like now y'all coming out the woodwork, but you know, it is what it is down yep. here. So. Yeah, but going back to what we were saying our previous podcast, where I was saying, like, you know, this ain't a basketball town, a football town, you know, it's a sports town. If you're winning, then you're gonna have people, you know, doing exactly what Mark is saying. You know, you go outside, you see people wearing dolphin jerseys and dolphin memorabilia, you know, so it's always a good thing to see the canes to see the Dolphins and also see the Marlins actually in, um, moving in the right direction. You know, it seems like right, right now for Miami, everything with sports for Miami is doing good They're on a, on a, you know, positive track, but yeah, going back to the game, you know, that we had on Sunday, like I, I was trying to tell people, you know what I mean? Hopefully y'all, y'all used me and Marcus, um, um, you know, strategies, our whole points, you know, to place bets and, you know, win some bread. But remember, I told you, man, my score was final 28 to 17 and the score wound up being 29 to 20, you know, off, uh, you know, late, you know, field goal from, you know, dead time with 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 um, the Chargers. But I kind of tell you, I told you guys that that two don't really have to do much. I mean, you got most quarterbacks. Um, of course, I was kind of off on, you know, gave him the Aaron Rodgers and the Drew Brees. Um, accolades, but, you know, um, my whole point was, you know, um, you're going to have teams that's going to, you know, um, not just teams, but quarterbacks that's going to go ahead and give you these big numbers passing touchdown wise, but 
if you don't have the special team to go with it, if you don't have the defense to go with it, then you're going to have all these these accolades without without the title. You know, same thing like with James Harden. You know, you got you know M- MVP of the league, former MVP of the league, scoring titles, this, that, and the other, and you don't have no ring. So um, with Tua, Tua has a a team that's built perfectly for him. O line is looking stout right now. Um, I think we still can do a little better on the O line um, because um, the pocket don't be as clean as I would want. Better upgrade than what we had these previous years, but you know. Um, I like perfection as far as um, blocking our quarterback, especially if he's coming off a hip injury. But um, yeah, that game was perfect. You know, um, Tua didn't have to do much. The defense did what it did. The um, special teams gave us a block, you know, a block field goal. Uh, or was it a block punt? Um, regardless of the fact, you, oh yeah, block punt, pick up and scored. Um, it seems like for the last few weeks that our team been scoring in every aspect of the game. And I'm loving that. You know, our field goal kicker is uh, making Bryce Flores don't have to do too much. You know, uh, we he, he he I trust the field goal kicker. He he reminds me of a young Olindo Mare. You know, right. matter of fact, he just passed Olindo Mare um, mm-hmm. as far as record wise, what what consistent kicks. You know, consess, consecutive kicks. Um, so yeah, going back to what I was saying, man. You know, I was kind of questionable on how. Um, we spent the money on the corners, knowing that we needed so many other things. But look, we, we, I told you, Byron Jones and the X Man was not gonna make sure that 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 um that um our, our our opposing quarterback was not gonna go ahead and do what he's been doing. I mean, of course, you know, like I said, you know, you have top picks, you know, um, Tua and um, Justin Herbert. Both of them, their their career is gonna be, you know, kind of compared until they retire. Um, hopefully they have a long career, you know, but again, the Dolphins, you see yeah. the logo, they're doing what they do. And I can't yeah. say anything, but just praise the Dolphins um, and what they're doing in Brian Flores. Yeah. Feeling like the nineties right now when, when Dan Marino was dominating, you know, hopefully we can take it home uh, with a Super Bowl. Uh, two more things about this game though. Did you see that Justin Herbert like got a haircut now? Yeah, Justin oh. Herbert. He looked like he's like 12. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what we're doing to people right now. We're making them think about their whole life. Yeah, like, like I, I got this juju on me, man. I need it. I need to change everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I mean, whatever, you know, whatever you need to do to, to change it up, you know, do that. But Justin Herbert had to get a haircut. It looks totally different now. So now let, let's just let's talk about the division race because it's a real race right now between the Dolphins and the Buffalo Bills. Um, it, so more like the 90s, like I was saying, which transitions us to, to the next game to really talk about, which that Buffalo Bills, Arizona Cardinals game that everybody was talking about with that ending. That ending was crazy. I was Ooh. watching, I actually was watching that game, you know, because the Dolphins game was pretty much, pretty much over at that point. So I was watching, you know, that game and I was like, wow, Buffalo came back with, with the last second touchdown to Diggs. Great catch by Diggs. I thought this game was over. The Bills thought this game was over. Mm-hmm. They, sh- they had no business losing that game. No business losing that game. But what happened? Hail Murray happened. <laughs> Hail Murray happened. Kyle Murray hits D-Hop, DeAndre Hopkins, Nuck, whatever you want to call him, over three dudes in the end zone catches the ball for a touchdown one of the best plays of the season by far deandre hopkins one of my best favorite receivers in this league for for a while now and he just keeps proving just how good he really is but the buffalo bills had no business losing that game if you got three dudes in the end zone there's no excuse i don't care if it's megatron you gotta knock that ball down these dudes were trying to get an interception for some reason over DeAndre Hopkins, and that's the reason why they lost the game. You know, I'm mad at them for doing it, but I'm happy because it's the Buffalo Bills. So exactly, because they, exactly. now they lost another game, and we are one game away from tying them record-wise in a division. So it's a really key win for Dolphins fans because we legit have a chance to win – this division so we might be looking at that play you know like at the end of the season like wow if we didn't have Hale Murray 
we wouldn't have won the division. So that that that's something we got to look look at for for the future as you know something that that really might help us to actually win this division. Yeah, so, piggybacking off of what um, Marcus was saying, like you know the Dolphins, you know we we've been picking the Dolphins for the last few weeks and we we've been successful in our picks. Um, but yeah, going back to that game, you know, um, I, I really like that game. It kind of it kind of reminded me of the game that we had with with them the week prior. You know, for it going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I don't know how you know the Buffalo Bills went ahead and um, found a way to lose the game. But again, you know, organizations, um, you have some teams that's historically fuck ups, historically <laughs> wind up losing the game in pivotal moments, you know, that's the New York Jets. It's been the Dolphins for a few years now, but we still have a history of winning. You know, we have championships, you know, same thing, you know, with these other teams, but it seemed like their curse is still going and still brewing and ours, we got that monkey off our back. But um, that play, you had Kyler Murray, you know, I thought he was sacked in the pocket. He done scrambled like Michael yeah. Vick, you know, and he just heaved it. He heaved it. Yeah. And, and it was perfect. <laughs> you was hard to throw on the run that far and that accurate. I mean, that's that was a great throw by Kyler Murray. I mean, reminded I was, me of somebody that we have in our own backyard right now in Tua. You know, yeah. I mean, both those guys kind of look similar. You know, you got Kyler. You know, that's a little bit more elusive. He, but but they look they kind of look the same, built the same. You know, yeah. and, and it's just that um, I think probably that hip injury kind of, you know, took a little bit of his finesse away from him. But still, regardless of the fact, he still has the the clutch accuracy in the run. Kyler Murray, when he came from OU, I wanted him also. I was trying to find a way to have the Dolphins draft him, you know, um, because of the accuracy. But I mean, look, I mean, faith is faith. And we got the quarterback that's um uh, the most accurate quarterback in NCAA history. But going back to the game, you have Kyler Murray just heaving it, um, evading um, um, the defense. You know, I'm like, damn, I thought he was sacked by like three or four different times before he made that throw on the sideline. And like, damn, D-Hop, he's just showing you what it is when he has a good quarterback behind him and a good, good coach behind him. Not saying that Watson is not a good quarterback, but again, it goes back to the organization, whereas when the top, you know, you got the, the management, you got the, the players, you know, everyone's on the same page. And, you know, with the Texans, you know, thank God, I want you to go haywire because we do got your pick. So continue being like that for the rest of the year. But it just shows like when you have um, the organization really behind you and your quarterback and your wide receiver, which is in D-Hop, that well, what he can actually do. You know, um, he's been one of the best court, um, raw receivers in the league for a few years now. You know, um, you got the Julio Jones and stuff like that. Um, you know, but but again, yeah, they did what it did. Um, it was a it was a picture perfect um, Hail Murray, and, 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 and I don't mind because you know it was going against someone in our division. You know, you got. Um, the Miami Dolphins coming in second in the division right now. I think we got an easier schedule than the Buffalo Bills. So, you know, for us taking that number one seed at the AFC, it seemed like more reasonable for me right now. Um, also, you have the New England Patriots, um, which is going to be the next game that we're kind of going to jump on. The New England Patriots, you know, the evil empire is trailing right there behind us. You yeah. know, so, so again, you know, these early games that they lost, you could kind of take that as a preseason game. Same thing with the Dolphins and every other team. You know, those teams that actually did win in the beginning, you know, that was a uh, a plus, you know, because it's really what's training cap for everyone. You know, everybody's dealing with this COVID right now. I don't even know if we're going to wind up finish, finishing the season. Um, you have the NCAA, you know, and practically every team, even our team, you know, is postponed for, for till next month. But, but yeah. again... You know, um, we got the Buffalo Bills one, Dolphins trailing number two, and we got the Evil Empire trailing number three. So that's going to go to our highlights for the next game, the Ravens and the Patriots, where I was trying to tell everybody, I was trying to tell everybody that Bill Belichick's going to find a way to win. He's going to find a way to win. Not only that, but you have Lamar Jackson 
going out in public and saying that, yo, they know what we're doing before we actually do it. And again, you remember Marcus was saying like, again, you got COVID, people are already saying that they can actually hear everything, you know, and I was saying like, look, we just went through the NBA finals, you know, it's certain things that I would never hear on the screen. I was hearing on the screen, you know, right. I, I liked it as a fan hearing certain things, but um, you got to learn how to disguise your, your, your offense, you know, um, your plays, um, especially at a time like this, but yeah, going back to what I was saying, the New England I, Patriots, huh? I mean, yeah, yeah, I get, I give you props to that, and I hate giving you props for ah. a win, you know. But one, one of the funniest memes that I seen this week um, was when they, they, it was raining. It was raining like crazy in that game. It was like crazy, like sideways rain going on. But as soon as that game ended, what happened? It the stopped. Rain, I was like, damn, Belichick Belichi is controlling the weather too. He talk to the gods. <laughs> Yo, he's, he's talking a storm for, from the X-Men. Like, what the hell is going on? And it seemed like it definitely affected Lamar Jackson. You know, uh, Lamar Jackson, not the greatest passer in the world, but, you know, a little rain probably is going to, you know, be a detriment to him. I'm like, damn, you know, like, seriously. And seriously? not just that, but he he won't be able to cut. If he, if he was running – he won't be able to run the way he want to because the floor is so slippery. You know, he don't want to injure himself. He's not able to like juke the way he want to. So, so yeah, you know, that game, Bill Belichick, you know, he finds a way. He spoke to God, you know, he and, and God answered his prayers. Yeah. You know, I don't think he speak to the same God that I speak to, you know, cause, cause, cause my, my God don't cheat, you know, but again, you know, it was a great game, you know, Cam yeah. Newton did what it did, you know, Cam Newton looked like Cam Newton of old. Um, he had a lot of lot lot of plays that 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 he wound up doing. Um, that I thought that he, he he just didn't have it no more. And then he showed me he still had that little pep in his step. Um, of course, the rain did um, factor in. You know, you got a quarterback that's um, more of like a Superman. That's what he calls himself. He's he's gonna use his body more of his elusiveness. Um, you know, on the contrary with Lamar Jackson. So, um, yeah. so, you know, 50-50 plays, I would like Cam Newton in that situation. And the rain, who's the perfect quarterback to have than Cam Newton at, at that particular time? So, yeah, that game was was perfect. It was wild. Um, I don't mind um, the New England Patriots winning again, of course, because you remember, like I told you, I don't need them finding no way to get anybody – in free agency from the draft as a quarterback <laughs> i don't need no new tom brady for another 20 years so That's yeah actually a good point actually a good point i didn't even think about that but yeah that <laughs> win yeah it gets them more away from uh trevor <laughs> lawrence or, or justin fields thank you exactly so so good win by the patriots just don't get more wins than us and we're we good to go Oh, that ain't happening. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean that, that that game is crazy. Bill Belichick, yeah, he he did it again. When you always feel like you count the Patriots out for some reason, they come up with a win. They did so in those last two games. I still don't think they're making the playoffs because there's there's way too many good teams in the AFC, and I I just don't think they can you know make a a, a big enough run uh, to make the playoffs. So. I feel the Patriots are still in the middle of the AFC, not going to be better than the Dolphins. I feel like the Dolphins are just an overall better team. I can't wait to see them play again. We are going to see them play at home um, in, a, in a few weeks here. So we'll see how good you really are, Cam Newton, because I, I feel I got a feeling like Cam Newton is going to make so many mistakes against this Dolphins defense. And Cam Newton, he's some tiny, bro. It's like sometimes he's good, sometimes he's not. You know, he's not a player you can really depend on uh, in, in clutch situations. And to be honest, that New England offense is really all about that O-line. That O-line is good enough to, you know, to win championships. It's really – they really ain't got a lot of playmakers. Uh, they got some average running backs. Uh, their defense is pretty good in the secondary because they shut down Hollywood Brown. I mean, albeit that's like their biggest play, biggest big play receiver is Hollywood Brown, and he got shut down. Willie Sneed, he's an average receiver. Really, um, he did get two touchdowns in the game, but like he he wasn't explosive. 
but it all comes down to the weather that that Bill Belichick was controlling anyway. And I'm mad that he was controlling that shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, then somebody needs to really investigate how he's controlling the weather in in New England. So, but anyways, uh, we'll move on to the Thursday night game where the weather is terrible all the time in <sighs> Seattle. Yeah. Uh, it's always raining in Seattle. Uh, Russell Wilson, it seemed like there's been a dark cloud over him lately. You know, he's been walking around like the dude in um in in, in Peanuts in um in Charlie Brown, <laughs> so acting all sad. You know, like come on, man, like what's going on? Because the last three games, I believe, is statistically probably his worst games of his career. Yeah. And now he he goes against a red hot Arizona Cardinals team, who we just talked about. And I don't see Russell Wilson bouncing back from this game. Me neither. Me neither. Because Russell Wilson needs a running game. We all, I think we forget that he won a championship because of beast mode, you know? Um, Yeah, they also had a great defense as well. But the reason why Russell Wilson was great is because he had a running game. And Chris Carson is kind of an underrated running back. Uh, he, cause he kind of came out of nowhere. Like what college did he go to? I don't even know. And I usually know what college every running back has gone to, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know where Chris Carson really, really came from. He kind of came out of nowhere, but he's, he's developed into this really great player and he's been injured the past three weeks, I believe. And the, their backup running back, Carlos Hyde also been injured. I mean, yeah, you got the young boy, DJ Dallas from the U and you got Travis Homer from the U who was also injured like the last two weeks. So you had DJ Dallas, who's good, but he's a rookie. Um, I, I think he's, he'll develop into a, a good back down the line, but he's not going to develop a strong running game like Chris Carson did uh, for Russell early in the season. So because of that, I feel like Russell Wilson loses another close game to the Arizona Cardinals, who are just red hot right now, and I just can't see picking against them. Yeah, I agree. I mean, Russell, Russell yeah, Wilson, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he basically messed up my whole pick last week. You know, I put the faith in him I'm talking about, you know, um, they got rid of, you know, Sherman and the Legion of Boom and, you know, Marshawn Lynch and his, his team now. And he, I like what he's doing off the field. And, you know, I'm giving you all these motherfucking accolades and your ass just do this to me and make me look crazy on, on, on the Mark West sports cast. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's going to go back and forth, just like what you're saying. Um, Defense-wise, yeah. Arizona supposedly supposed to have a good defense, but if you have a good defense there, why why in the hell are you actually um, continuing to um, go back and forth with these teams and, and, and have it like a high-scoring game for the most part, you know? So, I mean, I thought you had a good, decent defense, you know, and I think you have like a – your, your, your defense is spotty. Your, your defense, it depends on um, who you're actually playing. You know, if you're playing a, a better better offense, um, I think your defense is shaky. When you're playing an average offense, then it looks like your defense is a little better than average. So I think that you're going against a better offense um, with the Seattle Seahawks. Of course, you know, Russell, West, um, Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson will definitely give you what you want to get in a quarterback that's touchdowns, you know, that's, you know, um, you know, um, giving you the third, third downs and converting yeah. on thirds, yeah. you know, moving the chains. Um, like, like, like his interview is like, you know, this is what everybody go through. People are going to have their ups and downs, but again, I like how he spoke. And, and the crazy thing is Marcus, when, when he was, when I was looking at the interview from him, I told my wife, I'm like, God, this nigga sound like Marcus. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he was just so poison what he was saying, but, but yeah, um, I think that, that, that you're going to have this game, the Seahawks is going to be a, a, a close game at first, but then they're, they're not going to have anything for Kyler Murray and D-Hop. Like That's you can have no, that's basically what I'm saying. I just feel like they can't keep up with that offense. That offense yeah. is clean right now, you know? Exactly, exactly. So uh, I'm going to say that the Arizona Cardinals is going to – it's going to be close, but then, you know, they're going to win in the end by two – at least 10 to two touchdowns. Two touchdowns or 10 points. So let's just say 35 to 
24. All right, cool. Yeah, I could definitely fuck with that. I think uh, it's going to be like a 34 uh, 27 uh, type of game. And okay. the Cardinals are getting three points uh, just for all those betters out there. So it's even if you don't think the Cardinals are going to win the game, I feel like they'll keep it close with the three points. It may go to three and a half. And if the Seattle wins by a field goal, you still win with the Cardinals. So that is the Thursday night game, the Thursday night special. Uh, so let's just move into the college game Saturday. Now, first, before we even go into those games, let's just address the situation that we all dealing with right now, which is the COVID-19 situation. Oh, shit. I mean, I need this to just go away, bro. Like, damn. Like, how? And it's getting worse. Like, it's getting worse not only in the state, not only in the county, the country, but all over the world. It's, just like everything is like spiking back up. You got hold on, hold on, hold on. Devil got, a- advocate, like, do you really think that? Because my whole thing is, I'm like, it's funny. Like, right, right after this election is now, you're saying that it's going right back up, and then now you're saying that the vaccine that you guys want to go ahead and give to the to the um community is is ready. You know, it takes like normally four years to approve a vaccine, and we got this vaccine within less than a year. So it's just convenient for me, you know, that 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 um. This vaccine, well, not this vaccine, but COVID is on a on a rise again. So, yeah, I, I think uh, everybody's kind of well, most everybody's waiting on a vaccine. Um, I mean, it's it's questionable if people are even going to take it or not because I saw a report saying that almost over fifty percent of people are are would are waiting for a vaccine just to even go to a game. Man, they're like, nah, I'm staying home. I'm just going to watch the game on TV until there's a legit vaccine and I see that it's working. You know? I was, I was asking my um my wife like early. I was like, "What do you think um they'll do um like for the for the sports? You know, will they mandate the vaccine to play? Because you know, they would. I think they would mandate it. You know, like as soon as you come into the building or the practice practice facility, I feel like they're gonna mandate people to take the vaccine. Because, you think you think it's gonna get a lot of backlash? You think everybody gonna want to go ahead and take it? I mean, of course, there's going to be people that that go opt out of it, just like how people opted out of this season. There's players who yeah, opt yeah. out of this season. So there's definitely going to be people who opt out of it. But I think it's definitely going to be a situation. And we said all of this to say that and news came out this week that the Hurricanes games have been postponed. So a game that I would normally be at this week, I was planning to go to. What up, Tyson? What's, what's, go, what's good, bro? <laughs> and... <He's back>. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, a game that I would normally be at this Saturday against Georgia Tech, which hopefully they would have just mopped these dudes, got moved to like mid-December. Uh, their next game is not until um, December as well, like first week of December against Wake Forest, which is on the road. So, yeah, so games have been postponed due to covid there was a breakout, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and then that seems to keep on spreading. I think that's a point that that shouldn't be understated is that a lot of the players that pl- that would have played uh, in these last couple of games had COVID or or, or was uh, involved <laughs> with not not my dog's barking. You hear Rocky? Rocky's barking. He can, he, he can smell Tyson over there. <laughs> Who's that, bro? That's a dog in my house. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, like players like Xavier Restrepo ha- haven't been playing. Um, you know, other freshman players like Corey Flag, which is a, one of the you know big uh, recruits at linebacker that was expecting to get some playing time, haven't been playing. Mm-hmm. So obviously that got worse all of a sudden uh, this week. So. I think it's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time, because now I guess you have some time to get healthy. Hopefully by the time we get to Wake Forest, you have all your players back and ready to go. And um, basically just, you know, for people out there that just want to know, the they'll play Wake Forest and then they'll play North Carolina. And if they are eligible for the ACC championship game, then of course they'll play in the ACC championship game in that following week. If they are not eligible for that game, then they'll play that Georgia Tech game that they were supposed to play this week 
that following week. So hopefully we never have to see Georgia Tech at all and we play <laughs> play in the ACC championship game that week, which um, causes all kinds of conflicts for me because that's the high school state championship week uh, that week. So I don't know who, how many places I'm going to be. It's going to be a very, very busy, busy early couple of weeks in December. But anyways, let's just get to the, the games that we can pick this week. And Ohio State plays Indiana. Last week, their game was canceled against Maryland, which we I kind of wanted to see to his little brother, by the way. Yeah, man. <laughs> back from Maryland, you know, so I kind of wanted to see too. What up? What's that? He been balling too. Yeah, he, he was balling. So I wanted to see exactly what he was going to do against Ohio State. Ohio State, I did see them play a little bit. They're not as good as last year, bro. They are not as good as last year. Now, who is better this year is Justin Fields. Justin Fields is like his percentage is is if he ended the if he ended the season right now, he would have the best single season completion percentage in college football history. Hold on, hold on. But but didn't Dwayne Haskins look great in Ohio State? He also did look. That's a very. So, good so point. I'm like, you know, I'm just that's like, that's, oh, a, that's a very good point. But I, I think Justin Fields is way better than, than than Dwayne Haskins. I mean, I like Dwayne Haskins in college too. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna front. But I feel like um, Justin Fields has really elevated his, his game. He is not that far from Trevor Lawrence. It's basically the point I'm trying to make. So it'll be interesting to see what he does against an Indiana team. Indiana. You know, they beat Penn State. They're undefeated. They've been playing pretty well. Uh, you do have one of the Mullen boys down here from South Florida playing for Indiana. So, you know, they're starting to get some pretty good recruits over there. But I still feel like Ohio State is going to find a way to win this game in, in, in a game of a top 10 teams. Both of these of teams are top 10. I feel like Ohio State, although, like I said, the team not as good as last year. I actually feel like Ohio State should have probably beat Clemson last year in the playoff uh, game. But I still feel like they'll find a way to win to beat uh, Indiana. Like always, you know, um, this is not even, like for me, it's not even a question. I mean, you have certain teams that's never top 25, let alone top 10. That's the Indiana's it's basketball school. Like, this is not a football. I mean, you got a football team, but, like, we know what it is. The same thing when it comes to UM. I mean, it's not based on basketball. It's based on football. You know, don't nobody know, go to Alabama for basketball. They go for football. So, you know, going to this game right now, of course, you know, they're not the same from last year. Of course, they lost a lot of people, and you have people that's not playing because of COVID or – you know, they just decided not to play the whole season because of the COVID. You know, you gain the inconsistency in play and, and practicing and all of that. So for me, I mean, it's a no brainer um, with Ohio State. Ohio State is a team that they're that this is what they do. They breathe, sleep football, you know, um, I mean, you got the basketball school. Of course, you're ranked, I think, number nine, nine or ten. I'm not even going to take too much time on this game. You got um, Fields is looking decent. You know, like I said, you know, he looks like, you know, Dwayne Haskins for me. I mean, better than Dwayne Haskins, but look, at the end of the day, you're surrounded by five-star players, four-star players. I don't even think you got any three- or two-star players on your team. So you have nothing but the best on your team. Huh? If they do, they're on the bench, probably. Yeah, yeah, they're on the bench, you know. But, but yeah, you know, why would you not look good? For me, why would you not look good? So, so you know, regardless of the fact, and, and just the plain fact that y'all only played, like, one or two games, possibly three, and, and you're ranked number three. That just shows you, that just shows you what it is. Everybody know that this is a high-powered team. You know, they're normally top five. Top 10, let alone top five, one or two, you know, I mean, it's a no brainer. I'm not yeah. going to pick no basketball team against a football team that's been winning, <laughs> you know, all the time, even though I hate they bitch ass for winning against the University of Miami with that I bullshit that ass up. flag, you not know, <laughs> but, but, but again, Phantom flag. it's going to be a domination. I don't think it's going to be a close game. I think, you know, Ohio State going to put their foot on their throat, 
you know, and it's going to be like 42 to like 21. Wow. Wow. You know, it's funny how you, you, you called that score, too, because I was about to give you the spread, which I usually do. And guess what it is? What? Minus 20. So it's almost like right on the head. <laughs> and you know, know the, you know, the crazy thing is I don't even gamble. So <laughs> as far as the spreads and all, I never look. I don't even like Marcus will have to teach me. Like, you know, when it's like a two point favor or three. I don't even know none of that shit. And, well, well, basically, since you, you called it 4120, right? 4120. Mm -hmm. That means you're saying bet with Ohio State because they're going to win by 21 points, which is just over 20 points. Okay. So if okay. you think it's going to be anywhere closer than that or you think Indiana is going to win, of course, then you bet Indiana. So. I say all that to say, I think Indiana is going to make it just a little bit closer than that. You know, I feel like they will make the spread in this game and, you know, cover the spread, but just a little bit though, but by like a field goal. So okay. if, if you go 41, 20, I, I say 41, 23, you know, just like that, you know, I feel like they'll it, make it closer. Than but the they'll drop the Ohio state. The reason why I say that because Ohio state is trying to stay in, stay in the top three. They're not trying to drop, you know. I don't, like I said, they only played a few games. If, if they look like, you know, they're not, they're not, you know, capitalizing on the spread or making people money on the spread, they're gonna drop. So, so for them to stay in the top three, they need to do what it do. Because look, Miami won last week, 25-24. We dropped, and we won. Yeah. So you yeah. know, you you don't yeah. want it. You you want to make sure that if you want to stay top three, yeah. at least top four. You know, um, you want to make sure that you do what you need to do. And I think that's exactly what Ohio State's going to do. Um, you know, yeah, we'll, they, we'll see. We'll we'll see. see. Uh, I think the polls are bogus right now. I mean, a lot of people was mad because the hurricanes dropped, you know, but I think it, it really doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter because there's a bunch of teams that are in the top 25. They, they ain't got no business being in the top 25 because mm -hmm. there's a bunch of teams that still haven't even played a game yet. Like Utah who should be a pretty good team this year, hasn't even played yet. You know, uh, USC, I think, played two games. Yeah. Ohio State, who, who we was just talking about, only played three. So, I mean, don't pay attention to the polls. I, if you're a Hurricanes fan and you got mad because the Hurricanes dropped, I mean, for one, yeah, you lost against – you won against a, a team that you probably should have beat by more uh, just because they got three losses to you won. But, you know, don't worry about that. As long as we went out and we could play for ACC championship game, that's all that matters. And, and, and not just that, piggybacking off what he's saying, I don't even mind if we don't play in the ACC um, um, championship game. You know why? Because that's why De'Ara King came over here. He came over here to be on that stage. If we wind up, if COVID wind up fucking up that whole shit, he's going to come here another season. I don't want this just being a one and out. You know what I mean? I, I, I want to continue. <laughs> Exactly. I want to continue having a quarterback that's going to give me the, 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 all right, we're going to win. All right, we're going to win. Oh, you, we, we got a shot, you know? So if we can go ahead and win out, you know, not make the ACC, not because we lost is because, you know, Notre Dame will be Clemson. We could always sell that to these prospects that want to come here in 2021 and 2022. We could be like, yo, you feel me? And then they'll go ahead and sign on with the with, with the um Kane. So again, like I get, like I said, Western Domus, I see the future, and yeah. I see that. The I was just gonna say that you over here trying to predict the future. I hope you're right on this. You know, if that happens, we are gonna circle back to this podcast and be mm -hmm. like, all right, Western Domus was was hitting on. on, on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hopefully that happens. So I mean, damn, you just making it feel making me feel good because it's like a win-win situation. Exactly. Like, make it we good, you know? <laughs> oh, so it's a great season. Although it's mm -hmm. been a crazy season, 2020. Um, uh -huh. first, I sports fans, um, you know, I can't ask for anything better for what's happening happening in 2020. Exactly. So, so yeah, let's just roll into the next game. The only other, you know, I, I guess somewhat decent Florida team. I mean, we're not going to talk about the Gators because the Gators are going to mop Vanderbilt, you know, yeah. to – the next you know week and you know obviously they they mopped Arkansas last week I picked I picked against them again last week but of course you know that's my hurricane fandom coming out so Florida is definitely a legit uh contender we'll see what they do I mean uh as the season progresses but another team uh that will be playing this week is UCF and UCF has a chance to actually 
slay one of the Giants in the, in the top 10 right now that trying to sneak into the playoffs, which is Cincinnati. They're undefeated right now. Cincinnati, interesting, is playing the role of what UCF used to play um, really? because UCF has lost a couple of – they lost three games this season, I think, already. Mm-hmm. So they are not the UCF of old. So Cincinnati is kind of replacing that team. So I, I think this is an opportunity for UCF to really remind – the nation that they are still one of those legit teams coming out of Florida. Like and that quarterback came back also. So, you know, that yeah. changed the whole perspective. You know, you had a quarterback that he was, he was basically godly for, for that team, you know, let's not say he's one of the best quarterbacks of all time, but he did oh. a lot for that team and he got oh, injured and he's back. Could, the kid could play though. A legit, that kid could play, man. Like just watching him play Milton and he's from Hawaii too. I just want to point out. So he's from that pedigree of Tua and, you know, all these other, you know, players that have come out of Hawaii recently, but, uh, but go ahead. Uh, who, who you think is going to win that game between Cincinnati and UCF? And then I'll give you my pick. I mean, I think, I think, um, Cincinnati's going to win, even though I want them to lose. So the Canes could go ahead and hurdle their ass. But um, I think the Canes is ranked nine. I, I, I'm, nah, I think they're ranked 11. Regardless, yeah, you know, if they're ranked 11, you know. Right now. Huh? You're yeah, out the top 10. So so we should be ranked 11 right now since he ranked number 10. Since he loses, Miami go ahead and jumps them. Um, Miami, I think we're going to go ahead and keep dropping because we're not going to be playing for the next two weeks. So, um, you know, that's one thing we need to worry about. But for this game, um, you got UCF, you got that quarterback that came back. Um, I think he still got something to prove, you know, like they were saying, oh, you know, they, they won championships. And of course, you know, they never really won a championship. That's, that's but, championship. <laughs> exactly. They even had, a, I think, a parade, you they know, behind everything. that, you know, so, so yeah. Everything. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say that um, Cincinnati is going to win. Um, ho- I don't want that to happen. I really want UCF to win. Um, but like Marcus said, they already lost three games. Um, yeah, you got the quarterback that came back, but look, you're dealing with a, a team that's um they feel I'm pretty sure they're feeling themselves, you know. They want to make the playoffs, they want to go ahead and keep building on this, and their then their um football staff is 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 gonna have them prepared to kind of dominate U- UCF, you know. Um I'm just going to go ahead and say uh, Cincinnati is going to win 28 to 21. 28, 21, almost hit the spread again. (laughs) The spread is Cincinnati by six. So you got about one point once again going with the favorite. But I'm going to go with the underdog on this one, man. I'm going to go with UCF in this game to cover and to win outright. Uh, I just feel like, you know, Cincinnati, it's a bunch of hype with them. Uh, yeah, I, I don't feel like they played any legit teams as of yet. And I think UCF has a chip on their shoulder. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when they win this game, they're probably going to say that they won another championship. But who cares? <laughs> as long as they beat Cincinnati. And like you said, the Hurricanes move up a little bit. Uh, if Cincinnati loses, get these, you know, you know, pretenders out of the way. Uh, I just feel like Cincinnati is um, overrated a little bit. And I think UCF, you know, is catching them at the perfect time to really beat them. So I picked them to cover that six at least. Uh, but okay. definitely thinking about them winning the game outright. You okay. know, I, I ain't mad at that either. So um, got a few minutes left uh, in, in our podcast uh, for the, the mid- midweek edition of the Mark West Sportscast. Definitely follow us on Instagram too. That that shit is lit, man. So you know, watch watch our stories, uh, our posts. Um, you know, I, I I got a feeling we got a, a couple more posts to to put up soon. Uh, just based on this on this podcast, I feel like um, we got a couple more posts uh, we need to put up. But I do want to talk about high school football this week with the Benjamin Report. Mm-hmm. Big games this week. I mean, these games, you know, to kind of let you know, Wes, can really decide the championship because, as you know and I know, championships run championships run through South Florida mm-hmm. for the most part. And interestingly enough, Shamanad Madonna, three-time state champion, right, they get to play who? Uncle Luke. 
Uncle Luke and Miami Edison. Yeah, that's right. Miami Edison, the, the school out of Little Haiti, baby, right there on 62nd, is balling this year. Balling. You know, they they uh took out Norland uh, pretty handily. I mean, they they handed them a pretty, you know, embarrassing loss. So I really feel like it's gonna be a game. And you know, against Chaminade, the thing about Chaminade is that they got a great running game, and you can arguably, arguably say that they got the best defense in the state. But their quarterback play, you know, sometimes suspect. You know, they do got that work workhorse with Thad Franklin from the um, committed to the U. So look out for him next season, uh, possibly next season. You already see in the work that the Hurricanes are putting in with freshman running backs this season. I expect that to continue next season, especially if Cam Harris decides to go to the NFL. He should because he's been gooking. I'm sorry. He has. He has. I'm I'm not sure what's going on with him. Uh, maybe he hasn't been practicing as much. Uh, I, I don't know what to say what's going on with Cam Harris. But yeah, I, like his shit don't stink. His ass over here is not loyal. You keep shit in, in-house. Do not go on social media and talk your bullshit saying that you're not getting carries. No, I don't know what's going on. Man, I, I didn't even hear about that, but, you know, I believe it, you know, I feel, and, you know, he's just not running with that, uh, that fervor that you expect from a, from a Miami running back. Don Chaney is, Jalen Knighton is, Jalen Knighton is a little just undersized. Once that boy gets big, he'll be good to go. But, um, but yeah, back to this game, I feel like, um, unfortunately, Edison is going to take a loss here I you know I, I don't I, I don't want to be wrong on this game though because if I'm wrong on this I'm gonna be mad that I didn't pick, <laughs> that I didn't pick Edison to, to beat Chaminade but you know the coach over there Damon Jones uh, he's a great coach uh, I think he's rather underrated I feel like he could get a college coaching job you know very soon just with the program that he's built over there at Chaminade and I think they're gonna find a way to win a close game against Edison and and and, the, and Luke's uh, Luke's boys uh, over there at, at you know in Little Haiti, so I think they win that game. But the big prime time matchup of the week is American Heritage versus Miami Northwestern. I mean, that's a good these, game. These are arguably the two best teams in the state. You know, uh, Max Preps, who covers high school nationally, said that 5A, which is the division that they play in or the class they play in, is the, is one of the best in the state. And it's because of these two teams. I mean, you got Hurricanes commits all over the, all over the field in James Williams. Um, you got legacy players from Miami like uh, Earl Little Jr. Um, you got uh, Nesta Silvera's little brother, Bugsy Silvera, who's a dog um, on, <laughs> on American Heritage. Uh, but Miami Northwestern, I think they're more of a complete team. They both have really young quarterbacks who, you know, are inconsistent at times, although they do play against high level competition. I can't see myself picking against Miami Northwestern in this game just because I feel like their playmakers on the outside are just slightly better than American Heritage's player makers. Um, one of which is Romello Brinson, also committed to the U. Dude just makes a play damn near every game. And I feel like he is one of those players that can play receiver possibly next season for the U, like on the field. So I think he is going to be the difference in this game, like just the plays that he makes. If they can get the ball in his hands, I feel Northwestern wins a very, very close game, but low scoring because both of these defenses are just, you know, vicious, you know. So I feel like this is going to be like a – 16 14 type of game where Northwestern's uh kicker wins it. Uh, the boy Leo Zwazo, who, who's a really good one of the best kickers in South Florida, I think he wins it on a last second field goal. I was gonna uh, ask, um, with the head coach of Northwestern, like, didn't they fire Max? They did not fire Max. Um, well, he was in some controversy bringing it back to COVID. Uh, forcing, not forcing, but like he held practice when they weren't supposed to, like when it was like the height in the spring, when, you know, COVID was booming, like he held practice, like, like nothing was going on, you know? <laughs> so they kind of, right. you know, threatened, yeah, they threatened to him. Yeah. That's how, that's how important winning is, 
you know, for, for that program, for Liberty City, you know, it, it's really important for them to continue to win. I mean, this is a team that won three state championships. Yeah, that's know? why I was like, you know, when I seen it on the news, I'm like, I could have sworn they fired him. I was surprised yeah. when they fired him, you know, but I, I did understand, you know. Yeah, yeah. So they didn't fire him. Um, he apologized for what he did publicly and he was forgiven for it. So he's continuing to coach uh, for the Bulls. Uh, there were some rumors that he was going to go to Flomo and start to coach their their team. But, you know, that fizzled out. But, um, yeah, I think Northwestern, you know, ends up winning that game uh, just because, you know, uh, that playmaker in Romello Brinson is better than the playmakers on um, uh, American Heritage. So the one other big game of the week is Gulliver, two private schools, Gulliver versus Cardinal Gibbons. You got the Dade Private School in Gulliver against the Broward Power Private School in Cardinal Gibbons. Now, both of these teams got playmakers all over the field, really great uh, quarterback play as well. I think this is probably one of the most competitive games that it's going to go back and forth type of game uh, I see it being a high scoring type of affair because both of these teams are, are just explosive Cardinal Gibbons runs an air raid offense so it's a fast pace uh, offense uh, Troy Stilato who is a Clemson commit receiver one of the best playmakers in South Florida and because of that I, I picked Cardinal Gibbons to to beat Gulliver in in a close game I mean I I'm going to be at the Northwestern American Heritage game just because, you know, there's just going to be too much star power on that field to miss it. But I'm sad that uh, I am going to miss this game here because it's probably going to be the most fun to watch. Uh, the other game is going to be more of a defensive battle. This one's going to be a high-flying affair. And I think the winner of this game wins the state championship. And I also thought that about the last game and the, the one before too. So it's 3A with the Edison Chaminade. 5A with Northwestern American Heritage and 4A with Cardinal Gibbons and Gulliver. And I think the winners of all of these games win states. That's how good South Florida football is. And I think Cardinal Gibbons wins a very close shootout type of game. I'm going to say 41 to yeah. 30. Yeah, 41 to 38. Cardinal Gibbons wins a close one. We'll see if they can win a second straight title. Oh, well, second title, no, nah, not straight. The second title for that school. So those are the picks for the week uh, for for the high school, and I believe we're we're all set as far as nah, we ain't set yet. You know, we got to yeah. jump into that versus battle tomorrow. You feel oh. me? You got Jeezy versus oh, Gucci. You feel me? Uh, you got G um, Jeezy the snow cone, <laughs> and you got <laughs> Gucci man. You feel me? Now again, you know I grew oh. up listening to both. I, I listen to both. I, I'm big fans of both, like straight up. Like anybody who knows me knows I'm a big fan of Gucci and Young Jeezy. Like exactly. it, it's hard to choose who who's really better. I feel like maybe Gucci to me. He's he, 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 he a street nigga Gucci compared has, to Jeezy. Gucci to me has a more number of hits. Like he has a ridiculous catalog like his shit is so long, long. <laughs> like you i don't think people really understand his mixtape game his mixtape game to me is worse is, than lil wayne anybody else yeah you could definitely say it's it's better than lil wayne and that's saying a lot i'm telling you gucci man's uh, mixtape game gives him a chance to win but as far as like the bigger hits the bigger hits where you hear that you hear the song in the club and you like, oh, you put your drink down because you need the jam a while out is Jeezy for me. You know, like there's certain songs. I mean, the first album, you could play that the yeah. whole way through. Yeah, that motivation on the one. Come on, man. You could play that thing the whole way through. And Gucci, Gucci's uh, albums are not as strong yeah. as, as Jeezy's albums. You yeah. Know? I feel like Jeezy's uh, 103. Uh, was was amazing as well. Uh, recession. Was See, but you gotta think about it though, man. When, you know, you got Jeezy. You know, he got he got um, Def Jam's. You know, backing him. I mean, um, Gucci Man was doing everything independent. All all them albums that he was doing. I mean, besides him coming out of jail, 
and then getting signed to Atlantic, you know, and getting that little extra push. But before then, like Gucci was doing his thing by himself. So, you know, I understand where you coming from because I remember going to a, a T.I. Um, Jeezy concert. The crazy thing was it was a T.I. concert and um, Jeezy came out first. Everybody was standing. Nobody <laughs> sat down. When T.I. came out, that's when people sat down, people was drinking, people went to get concession. It was at the AAA, you know. So, so again, you know, Jeezy got a complete different respect um, than T.I. It's like it was sort of been reversed. It should have been the headliner would have been Jeezy and, you know, whoever um, T.I. would have been, you know, his opening act or whoever came out before him. But, yeah, I mean, like I said, be, because of his whole discography, of course, you know, I got, I got, practically all of Gucci Mane's um, albums. This is before the Spotify's and everything like that. Yeah. Like, I could literally had every last one had of his download, albums. You, you feel me? Off the computer. <laughs> exactly. You feel me? From Bird Russia to, you know, to, to all these um, different songs that he, um, and albums that he actually had. So, like you said, I don't think that his albums was better than Jeezy albums. Of course, you know. But I think because he got so much music, he could pick like three songs from this um, mixtape, three songs from this mixtape, you know, five songs from this mixtape, you know. But again, I think it it, it really depends on um, what what songs they decide to actually play. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because like <clears throat> even with the Rick Ross versus the Two Chains, there was so much songs that Ross could have played that he didn't play. Yeah. Right, songs right, that right. I expected him to play that he didn't play. And I'm like, yo, mm -hmm. what the fuck? But again, I thought he did that because that was his homeboy. Now you have Jeezy and... I'm glad you, before you keep going, let me ask you, who you think won that one? Because I, I pretty much watched that one. Who you think oh, won? Rick Ross or 2 Chains? Ross won hands down. Ross, you know. Ross killed it, bro. Killed him. It, you know. it, was like, it was like 2 Chains was like, damn, he was trying to pull something out at the end because he was pretty much done. I mean, he does have some great features, uh, 2 Chains does, but Rick Ross, you, you, like, I always love Ross, like, from Port of Miami, you know? I've always loved Ross for, for obvious reasons, but, like, after that battle, I really realized, wow, this dude really has a catalog, bro. Yeah. Like, he's got a serious catalog that you could put, put up with almost anybody. And not just know? that, even with, with the Ross, you know, you have... um. Jay Z don't make a lot of songs with people. Ross got like maybe six, seven songs with with Jay Z. Even though I don't like Jay Z, you know the whole Tupac situation. That's the whole reason. But the whole man in your heart, bro. <laughs> hey, hey, still, man, still. You know, I only fuck with the real. You know, and I don't like the way his ass and Beyonce never go to um BT Awards or any other awards. It's like you know we're the ones helping you make this money, and you don't even have the respect to even come you never come like literally never come i think i've seen one i don't normally watch bet awards anyway but even when i don't even when i um don't watch them that's one of the topics beyonce and jay-z didn't show up you know so i don't like people like that you know if we if you know that you're going to get an award and you know people acknowledging you at least show up you feel me that's one thing but going back to the gucci man and and um jeezy i mean you got one that said that you try to set me up you feel me I was hoping we was gonna to touch on that too because, like, damn, did they they did they totally squash the beef? Like, oh, nah, like, they ain't they ain't squash that they ain't squash that beef. Um, um, so they gonna be Gucci Man, but you gotta understand, Gucci Man really a street nigga. You feel me? And and, and I know you probably like, damn, Jeezy a street nigga too. Look what he's talking about. But the yeah. people the people that was around Jeezy is calling him pussy, Big Meech. Everybody know Big Meech from being BMF. You know he's saying. I'm Jeezy a square. He's saying Jeezy ain't no real nigga, you know. So, so again, that 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 goes back to what I was saying with with, with the whole Jeezy and 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 um Gucci. I didn't really understand why they was beefing. I know it was like probably because of that song. Um, you know, my hang chain um hang down to my dick. That song, you know, yeah. it's supposed to be on is is Gucci Mane's song. It's supposed to be on Gucci. Yeah, I'm so icy. It was supposed to be on Gucci Mane's album. But T.I., not T.I., but Jeezy wanted to put it on his album, which would not have been a problem, but your album was coming out before mine. So how you how you want me to put 
the song that's number one everywhere on your album that's coming out before mine. Maybe if it came after, it wouldn't be no pressure. You know what I'm saying? So I guess Jeezy felt some type of way about it, but damn, that's not your song. Like, how you trying to dictate to a real street nigga how he gonna move with his motherfucking music? So um, yeah. I, mean, I heard I mean, it was like a setup, you know? I heard um, Jeezy try to set up Gucci Man with this female, you know, had some niggas run up in his crib and Gucci Man murked that yeah. nigga, you feel me? So- Yeah, you know, I heard about that too. Like, it's a yeah. lot of- I'm glad to see it happen though, because when I saw, saw the news come out, I was just like, okay, like, I thought they had beef. That, that was like the first thing that came to my mind, but I'm glad to see it. And, and it's going to be fun, fun to watch, you know, for, you know, Gucci Mane fans and Young Jeezy fans like myself and Wes, you know, it's, you know, we couldn't ask for maybe a better matchup, but this is going to be judged though. You know, you know, real niggas will judge it one way. And then you got the, you got females. You got, you got females that that'll judge it a different way, right? Yeah. So I think the real niggas will probably go with the Gucci side. Gucci. And then the females will go with the Jeezy side because, like I said before, Jeezy's just got more more hits. Not um, just that, but his dime is on that fucking. He, he's got more more hits that are more popular than. Then I yeah, think. and he got his dime. His dime is on the rail on that show. She's gonna motherfucking that's generate true. a lot of that's people true. that's gonna go ahead and be like, oh, that's her, her husband or potential or a future husband, you know, hey, but, that hey, support. But, but, but they they fuck with uh, Gucci Man's wife too because oh yeah, Keisha K.O. Wife is a ride or ride die, man. Yeah. She like saved up money while he was in jail, mm -hmm. um, brought back another million for him, and 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 kept him going. You know, yeah. it's like it's like he never left. You but know, yeah, and, and she she basically like kind of changed his whole life because he constantly was going to jail, constantly right. was you know doing certain type of drugs. Right now, his right. mind is it, it looked like his mind he is clear. Like a He's a different yeah. person. But again, uh, the last the last maybe year, you start getting the old Gucci Mane back. Like you you, <laughs> you feel me? Because when he first came out, he had this whole you know, doing the right thing. And he's still on that. But uh, eventually I seen him um, ban somebody off of a video, a, mu a music video set that kind of snitched on him and thought that it was sweet. So um, yeah, he wind up um, like turning into the old Gucci man. We, when we get off this podcast, go ahead and look that up. This Gucci man, he basically like made this nigga turn into a bitch in front of everybody, you feel me? Because of something that he did previously to when Gucci, um, that basically got Gucci locked up, basically snitched on Gucci. Gucci got locked up. Again, Gucci should, should be kind of happy, but nobody should be happy to go to jail. But look, when he came out of jail, look at him now. He's a better person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm happy to see it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens here. Um, I'm rooting for just a good show. Um, you know, I'm going to have my popcorn ready. Yeah, I'm going to have my popcorn ready. I'm going to have my beverage ready. Ooh, you know, yeah. <laughs> it, it's going to be fun uh, listening to that. So uh, that's going to be a wrap on, on the Mark West Sportscast podcast. Uh -huh. So uh, we just gave you the picks. Uh, we gave you that real look out for that battle tomorrow. Thursday night football, Saturday games, and then we give you that real podcast. Um, Saturday. All right, so signing off. See you next time. Peace.